Okay, let's do some drawing. <clears throat> let's go to full screen. Uh, today, I think I had to reset all this stuff. It was a big pain in the butt. I, anytime I have to reset this computer, I lose my pictures. I got to totally put the pictures back in here and realign this and stuff. Today, I think what we're going to do is I have to do some thinking about what I want to do with this hull and where we're going to go next with this hull. So today I think what we're going to do uh, I think I might just do something fun a little bit lighter instead of having to do so much brain work. Uh, I think we'll draw a deflector dish for this thing. Now I don't know why I don't have my uh Oh, there it is. As I was say, I don't have my uh, 3D cursor, but it's there. So, Shift-C, that'll put it in the center there. Okay. So, as far as everything is saying, this is basically our cent This is the center of this object at the moment. Uh, hmm. Tempted to draw the neck on this thing, too. But the neck is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt, too, because it's actually, it's not flat, it's rounded on the uh, edges there. Uh, actually, I had a model of the, I've had a few, quite a few models of the original Enterprise, and that, uh, it actually had like a rounded shape. So, I don't know, let's dink around, let's see if we can make a neck just, just, just to play around with this, because I can always save it on a side file and stuff too. So, let's make the connecting neck for this. Uh, me and Stuart discussed this too, uh, the, the part of the story, the story of this actual dreadnought here is going to be that, uh, in a sense, that this is a design they made. One of the designs, and that this design basically was rejected. And uh, once I more or less, well, it's kind of funny. One, anything else I draw on here, except for a few parts, is kind of going to be the same. I don't know. I'm being there. Pretty much at this point, I'm kind of to the point where I'm almost like drawing two ships, actually. So, but the engines will be the same. And actually, that's just about it. The engines are about the only thing that's going to be the same on both ships. But uh, like I said, it's not going to be really too hard to draw, draw the things on here, except for these holes with these open bays, because I need to figure out how to put the... Uh, hangar bay doors on here and close them up and put the animation pivot points so that I can uh, open them and then since they're going to be open I need to put uh, interior detail in here uh, landing like that here I don't know if you can see where my arrow is I'll zoom in a little bit on this enterprise schematic you kind of see this uh, you see the shuttle and you see this like little hallway up in here where they could observe the launching and uh, recovery of the shuttlecraft because actually in the original series and pretty much have even up into almost into the next gener generation what they would do is uh, decompress the hangar bay open the doors take off land or whatever and when they brought a shuttle back in and they'd shut the doors and they'd repressurize this with with air, you know, and so they could get out and walk around and breathe. But they didn't have any kind of kind of like magical shields like Star Wars and uh Battlestar Galactica kinda has this thing where the ship the, you know, they have a whole hangar bay but it's full of air, but yet the Vipers can come in and land and there's no door. It's it, it's like they have a way of compressing air in there. And having kind of like a magic force field that keeps the air in, but yet it's still open where like the the ships can come in and land on the thing. 
Oh, okay, so thinking about this, I think what we'll do is, well, I already got it saved. But we're going to save it to, I'm going to go File, Save As. And I'm going to make this 9, make this a 10. And I can always go back to 9 and work on the, uh, oh, that, that's what's the beauty about this too, is if you actually kind of get these things, like once I get this, this uh, hole, the secondary hole, totally done, I can save it in its own file. And then if I have other files where I add stuff to it and stuff like that, but I could always go back to that file and redo that. And I could actually, if I wanted to, like if I was working on the whole separately and I don't like something about it and I change something and I move windows around or I do whatever it is I do to it and I like it better, then I can come back into the other picture with the other objects and then I can uh, delete the secondary hole out of the thing and and make a new ship kind of thing. Or I can also I can also uh, take the parts and pieces into that other file and you know there's basically two different ways of doing it. It's almost like having two separate ships. So what I was wanting to do here is we want to add a mesh. Let's add a cylinder. And a standard cylinder has thirty two 32 sides basically and I don't know if you notice do you notice how, you should notice how dark gray this cylinder is that's because I've actually added a material on this hole in the blender just to make it look a little bit different and I kind of went with a bluish gray and actually the original Enterprise like I think I mentioned this in one of the other videos the actual Enterprise was actually like a duck it was called a goose egg gray or a duck egg gray well a, kind of a bluish color and all the models I'd ever bought of the Enterprise were white and I'd put the decals on them and you know I never really painted them I never really did super duper good jobs on those starship toys I usually I used them more as a toy than I did as a uh, as a uh, model and I didn't make them as a really nice model hanging from the ceiling. I usually played with them. <laughs> Flew them around the neighborhood, you know. Was... Okay, so now we got a cylinder. Let's go to 7, which is from above. And this is kind of one of the things that's kind of interesting because if you look from the side, we got a, we got nice side views of these necks and the way these necks are different. I call them a neck. They're actually the support pylon, I guess you would call it for the uh, primary hull and uh, you know they actually have decks inside of them and the elevators and stuff and they're, like I said they're pretty skinny they would have been yeah, you, know, you know they have enough room to walk through them but you know you're talking maybe 20 20 feet across there it was, wasn't 80 or 60 feet you know some of the later ships they started making them a lot fatter but one thing what we want to do is we want to Push G and grab this on the Z axis. We'll drag, grab it up. Okay, and we can uh, we can do this in object mode, but it's hard to see because we can't see through it in object mode. If you hit if you hit the Z in object mode, see it kind of makes it yeah, it makes it weird looking, and it also cuts out the picture that I'm actually wanting to model this off of. Because on this particular ship, I'm at pretty much going to copy the Constitution class's uh, neck. The, the neck on the dreadnought, actual dreadnought class is bigger. It's a little bit uh, more broad and stuff. So what I want to do is I want to go to Object Mode, or Edit Mode. Object Mode, I want to go to Edit Mode. Then I want to hit Z. Then I want to hit A. And then that allows me to... Okay, and again, I'm not getting my picture. Oh, no, it's in front. I don't know why it why it makes it look like it's behind it. Go 
go to seven. No, it's in front. It, that's kind of weird. Uh, one thing I could do is I could actually go back to object mode and deselect. I think I could grab this. And I can grab it to the X and I can just slide it over here out of the way. Okay, now still, it seems like this is in front. No, it's not. Okay. Let's go back to edit mode now and see if we get a picture. Okay, that's this is what I was wanting. Is this picture right here. Okay, now if you notice, I have dots on the cylinder, but I don't have dots on the uh, secondary hull because it's an actually separate object. So what we want to do now is we want to grab from the Z. We want to shorten this down. We want to bring it. I want to bring this neck right there. And then we want to select A. And then we'll go box and we'll grab this. And I'm going to grab this to the Z. We want to bring this up just a, just a hair. Like I said, I'm darn near. And actually, actually, I think I'm going to make this a little bit taller than the Enterprise. It's just a little bit. About like that. I'm going to match that deck line there because there's actually a deck line there. Where it, okay. Now, if I come here, we're going to go, actually, let's box this whole thing. Let's grab it on the x-axis and let's slide it where it's kind of, uh, we, want our, we want our center line kind of on the center of the top of this thing. Okay, now I'll show you a couple tricks. Which one cool trick is if we come back to object mode, go Z like this. Now, watch, watch what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll come down here in the object, and I will go to transform, and then I will go origin to center mass. And what that did was it that put that little yellow dot in the center of the cylinder. because I should be able to scale. Let's go back to edit mode. And actually we should run up here right quick and save it again. Just because, so if, some, so if something messes up, you know, that we can, uh, okay, so let's go back. We're in edit mode. Let's go A. And let's go Z. Okay. Now I'll show you what I'm wanting to do here. I want to actually take this whole thing. Let's go B. And let's go scale. Uh, now, see, this is making me irritated because it's scaling from the uh, it's scaling from the 3D cursor, and I don't know how to tell it to scale from the. Uh, actually, I can right-click there. I get seven, which. And I can right click here, except for it's going to put it on top. I hit one again, see how it actually put it, actually put it to the bottom. Let's put it back to the side. Uh, if I'm scaling it at one direction at a time, it's not really going to be that big of a problem. But I think I need to do some research. There's actually a way that you can tell it to scale the object from the center origin and not uh, scale it. It's over here and in. 3D cursor, location, item, cylinder, display shading, face it, it just seems. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to look it up on YouTube kind of thing, or, or uh, I got a master blender book, but uh, there's still things I'm learning about blender. And it's so funny because sometimes when I figure it out or I get an answer, uh, I actually go to a lady called V Scorpion on YouTube. Because she has been doing this way longer than me as far as doing Blender. And she's also, uh, 
she's also been real instrumental in just she does has a bunch of tutorials she she doesn't draw starships or airplanes or ships but she draws objects and she has tutorials on how to shade and uv map and use tools and bezier curves and stuff like that so i've been watching some of that stuff and i learned quite a bit from her and some other people like i'm subscribed to so but and then it seems like when i learn something if i learn it the hard way like i don't know how to do what i'm talking about but i know that it's in here and then once i figure find out and i learn it I usually don't forget it i'm usually kind of like oh okay that's that you know that makes sense okay so this is what i want to do i want to scale this s to the x which means I want to make this thing skinnier and actually this might get a little interesting because what I got to try to guess kind of is I need to grab it the X it's going to move the object but it's not going to move it's not going to move the, uh, okay, then I hit A, let's box and grab these lower ones, let's grab them to the X, let's actually bring them, uh, let's bring those here. And what I'm trying to do is kind of line these bottom ones up with the bottom of the neck here. And actually, I think I'm messing up. Okay, let's look at this from the top. See what it did? It actually made our oval this direction. Okay, come back to one. Let's deselect it at Z. And again, we can come in here. Let's go to object mode. Object mode. And let's go to object and let's go to transform and let's go uh, geometry to origin to center mass again. And then that moves our that moves our uh, moves our dot back in the center of that object. Now let's go to seven. Let's go on top. This is where I'm was talking about I think I'm missing out and this, this is kind of funny because like I said you can actually scale this we can actually scale this object in object mode you don't have to scale it in uh, edit but you have to scale it in edit if you want to see what you want to do so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit scale and I'm going to hit Y and then I'm going to skinny this thing down like this okay Because this is kind of how it's shaped other than it's leaning. Now I've got a couple of options here. I can try to match this in a sense with the Enterprise neck. Uh, which I have a vague... I have a general idea of how it's shaped. I remember how it's shaped, and I remember feeling it on the model and building the model, putting the neck on the models, and, and eyeballing it, getting the saucer uh, level and straight with the, you know, because uh, it wasn't parallel. It was, perpendic it was perpendicular to this neck. This neck supported it. And some models were a little bit better than others about the way they molded it so that when you had it on here, Go control three. When you had it on here, it was holding the saucer up and it was some models it was real easy to like that you could mess it up and have it leaning to the left or the right. Other models had really good molding to where if you put it on there and you had it all glued right it just it just come it was just easy to make it look good. And I had a few where it wasn't easy to make it look good. I'll go back to seven, but like I said, we can uh and the other thing I could do here, edit mode, if I really wanted to, I could actually take this, I could keep this simple, or, what I was wanting to show you, if I go Z, okay, like if I boxed in, say, like, 
these ones on the front. And I sc could scale those to Y, and I could actually make the front a little bit fatter than the back. Because I think it was just a little bit, and I could actually... I could actually grab those vertices to the X and I could pull them in a little bit. Now if you we hit A and Z, if you notice we actually made the front and it's, it's kind of not what I'm trying to get at. It's not going to be super noticeable. This would be a thing like if you were an actually an engineer and you're actually if you was really making this as a real ship in real life, in a sense, then uh, and if you wanted these, if you wanted these sides flat to a certain point, you could you could actually flatten these sides a little bit and have your curves just on the ends. Like I said, I ha ha like I said, I have a kind of a general idea, but the, the next was somewhat shaped like this and then leaning, and it was rounded off on the, both sides, but the whole thing had a smooth. Kind of a tail. That's almost the deck shape it had, and then they leaned it, and it seemed to me it was just a hair fatter on the front than it was the back. Not by a lot, but a little bit. So again, when we could still, what by pulling that back like I just did, it kind of stubbed in these. So you almost want to maybe take these two, scale them to the Y, and widen them out just a little bit. Okay, now again, when I, these faces at the moment are flat, when I smooth them, they're going to look, uh, they're going to look better. But see, I'm kind of like, control three, and like I was saying, kind of on the, on, on the actual, uh, I think they did this, they said in Microsoft Paint, and even with the front on, like this particular one, you don't really see you only have basically one one uh, you have one thing of the neck you know I'd really have to look through a lot of line drawings and blueprints to probably uh, and, and actually like the deck if they showed the deck plans then I could probably get the actual outline of that neck but for what I'm doing with this model and it, even though I'm kind of want, wanting to copy the Enterprise to a point, I don't want to copy it exactly. I want it to have this ship. I want it to have a lot of what was called uh, what I'm calling the original series flavor. But I but 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 at the same time, it's not going to be the Enterprise. I just want I just want when we look at it to go kind of say hey that looks a lot that looks a lot like a constitution class let's see let's box this bottom in again okay now let's grab this and the x-axis let's bring it here yeah I, I just want it to look a lot like the enterprise in some ways i want it to have that flavor i want you to say ooh, it looks like the enterprise but i don't want you to i don't want a person to go uh oh, you know, it's the Enterprise with three engines. Uh, when I had first seen the, that's uh, kind of centered on the bottom, because I'm going to work on the bottom. And then what we need to do, actually, is kind of figure out the center here, which is, actually should be, should be this line here, pretty much. Okay, let's scale this to the X and skinny it up and kind of eyeball it and see if we can grab it to the X, move it a little bit and skinny it up some more, scale it to the X, skinny it. Okay, that's pretty close to that neck design. Okay, and then let's go to the top here. Let's box this up. And actually on this, I think we just need to grab it to the X. Lean it out a little bit. 
Now the problem I noticed already is that now all of a sudden this isn't this isn't scaled and oh and they have a drop down and they have the drop down where it actually meets the saucer but on a 3d model unless I'm uh, gonna do okay scale X whoopsie actually it will scale X from there which is kind of cool so we'll make it just a hair bigger and then grab it X okay if you notice that's pretty close okay a and Z okay what I was starting to say is that on a 3d model there's two options when I draw the saucer and put it on here depending on how it fits on this I can I could actually make that made up along the lines of the saucer and then draw out from it and stuff like that or the easier method which is what I'm doing and what I'm planning on doing is uh, okay let's go shift C is I'm just making the objects and then except for like in the hangar bay here but I'm not worried about it because there's actually going to be even as you look in here there's going to be some maintenance bays and some rooms and there's actually uh, in the design he actually kind of had this planned out for the neck to come down through there you know so that it would have structural support in a sense so let's save this right quick Again, let's go to object mode. Let's take this object and let's go to transform and let's put the uh, let's put the dot in the center mass again of that. So uh, what I'm getting at here is instead of instead of like I didn't create the neck to come up out of the secondary hole, which I, which I actually could have done. But instead of doing that, I just made it separate, and we're going to we're going to uh, well, I'll show you one thing. What we're going to do? We're going to take this page here, and we're going to push Z, okay, and we're going to grab this page to the X, and we're going to bring it up here. Let's go Z. Let's grab it. We're still on the page. Grab it. The X. And we're going to kind of figure out that that's kind of like the front of the ship. And that's kind of more or less where the uh, saucer, the uh, primary sensor array is going to come out of the front. Okay. Now, so we're going to grab this neck. Grab it on the X. And we're going to bring it here. Okay. And we're going to grab it on the Z and we're going to bring it down just a hair. And see what I'm saying is if this looks, this starts looking like, uh, because you got to realize, you, 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 you actually have a deck. In fact, let's just park that there for a second. You actually have a deck on this Constitution class. Since the hull sweeps up, you have a whole deck here that's above this, uh, above this uh, Dreadnought deck. Because this Dreadnought deck was made flush. Straight up and down. It doesn't, it doesn't, have, a, uh, doesn't have a curve up. So, again... I actually kind of have a couple options here. Now I could I could actually put a curve up in this uh, dreadnought deck, but as big as it is, uh, I don't know. It might it might would actually even look pretty good with a curve up in the deck. It it might actually might actually be interesting to put a curve up in that deck. But it would change the whole shape of this. Uh, it'd be a lot of work at the moment. Uh, it's something I might consider, but I think, I think, because it would run, it would have to run the whole length of the 
hull on that kind of stuff and I could put that in there but as being bigger it wouldn't really need it to be you know practical or functional so let's grab this neck again grab it on the Z and let's bring it down let's mate it up with the picture and, and I, like I said we could park it up here actually let's grab the sheet let's grab it on the Z and let's bring it down until I'm gonna bring that deck line right in here that's where our deck line is okay you can see and actually they almost look like they have a double split deck thing because of the way the hole is but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this deck line right to there that's the that's the deck line okay okay now let's grab this on the Z whoopsie okay let's grab it on the Z there we go I was hitting the Z I wasn't grabbing the next that, that's why everything was disappearing kind of stuff and let's bring this right down here let's see I'm gonna bring it here lower and then I'm gonna bring it back up I'm gonna bring it up where it mates right right there okay now what I'm saying now see we actually have this we actually have this down in this hole and like I said I don't think control 3 I don't think this is going to be an issue because we're actually going to put some things in there if it is an issue I could just come to edit mode Z and I can box this and I could actually grab it to the Z and I could actually just bring it up a lot tighter here go A and then Z and then like like I said well I, I could uh, f even put basically like I, once I draw in I could draw in almost like a uh, runway the other thing I could actually even do if I really even wanted to I could take each one of these vertices one at a time and pretty much bring it up to the surface now you notice this kind of has a funky kind of looks a little funky where it blends into the uh, blends into the hull if you come in close it looks like it's got like kind of like bleed shading and that's just because it's a model once we texture this UV map it that kind of stuff wouldn't be an issue but if I really wanted once I connect this if I connect this as a this is a parent o object and I connect this neck I connect this neck as a uh, now what happened oh I know what happened I uh, control Z control Z I when I brought that up it changed the angles on it so see that's one thing you got to consider when you're working in 3d so for now we're actually just gonna leave that like that we're gonna leave, we're gonna leave that stuck in there like that like like that actually could be you know and the other thing you could do we can do here too that might even be beneficial to a point would be see if we actually and they might actually do this if, if we uh, extrude to the Z and yeah whoops to the Z we actually extruded this down through the hangar bay A, C. They might actually would do something like this. I mean, uh, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't actually be impractical for them to have, have it running down into the ship like this for, you know, so you could, like I said, if you had, if you, if you actually basically probably, let's say they put a top deck, you could actually have like a top deck in here. You could have a, a deck level in here. It would be for maintenance and for support, kind of a thing. And you know, so your turbo, your turbo lifts could go all the way down through this neck and, and down into the bottom part of the ship where there's more decks down in here and stuff like that. I mean, you you could do it that way, or you could even you could even ran the same angle of the neck at an angle back into the ship and stuff like that. So. 
we'll, we'll play around with this, see what we think. Uh, one of the things we could do on this, let's go to face mode and we can go, go like that, which it already should be flat. It shouldn't be even a problem that it's flat. And we could go this one, I think alt. We could go smooth. And if we hit our T, we go back to verts, we go to uh, A, we go to object mode. I see how that next kind of smoothed out. It still has some shadowing. But once I UV map this and put it, uh... hang on a second. What? Pixel has a mouse and it's not getting it, and my mouse is like really scared and I don't know what to do with it. Pixel can't kill it for some reason. No, because sometimes they it. won't kill it. They'll play with them. Yeah, that's what it's doing. That's yeah. what Pixel's doing. Okay, what do we do with it? Just leave it be for now. I'll take care of it pretty soon, okay? Yeah. I gotta finish this, okay. Evie. You're in the middle of it, or I gotta totally redo the whole thing. I, that takes a lot of work to edit it like that. Okay. Got a cat problem. Cat caught a mouse. Okay. Uh, let's go back to edit. Let's go to faces. Let's go out with these ones. Again, T. Let's smooth them. And verts and T and A. Like object mode. So that's what we're going to do for now. We're going to have make the neck like this. And I'm going to save this. Excuse me. I'm going to save this. File save as. And I will see you in the next video. Uh, I'm probably already on a half an hour too. I try to cut these shorts and that talk. Sometimes it talks so long about just Star Trek or whatever stuff. And then I kind of like the way that's looking. And then part of it, it's kind of funny. It looks small because, like I said, the hole is so much bigger than the Enterprise hole. That uh, it, it, you know, but I don't want just a scaled up Enterprise. I would want it to be practical. So in the sense that it would be in the Star Trek original series universe kind of a thing. So if if they did, in a sense, rob the design or use something from the uh, Constitution class design on a dreadnought, but they built this thing to carry a whole bunch of shuttles to put troops on the planet and or attack craft. They, It's almost like it's a battleship slash aircraft carrier. It's a hybrid because it's going to have a lot of phasers and a lot of photon torpedo launchers, but it's also going to be able to carry like 20, maybe like 20 to 30 shuttles and stuff like that because I'm going to model a shuttle and we'll see how many we can fit in here, like practically, not just silly like having them just totally in it but you know see what kind of ships we can put in this thing so thank you for watching we will see you in the next video uh, i think this is i think this is 10 this time this is either 10 or 11 but uh and like i said i'll, I'll mark it appropriately and then, then the next one if it's 12 i'll know it's 12 so because i haven't made these in a few days and and we will see you in the next video